You're listening to Shoe In, covering the ins and outs of all things footwear, from sneakers to heels, loafers to slippers, and every type of shoe in between. Brought to you by the FDRA, the footwear industry's association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion. Helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. You know, Thomas, one of the things that is really cool about representing the industry, and we represent 95% of the industry, is that when something happens in the marketplace, we start to hear about it anecdotally. Uh, and something happened at the turn of the of the year, the new year, 2023, and we started to get more and more requests about how to navigate the world of RFID technology. And it wasn't just one member, it was a handful, half a dozen. And so it kind of clued us in that something was happening in the marketplace. And so what I want to do for this conversation uh, is bring in Josh Macy, who is at the Maxim Group. And Josh, one of the things we'll talk about in, in this conversation is what is RFID technology? It's been around for quite a long time, but it seems to be bubbling up relative to some recent retailer uh, commitments that have been have been pushed out there. And so I want to welcome you to Shoe and Show. Uh, thanks for joining this conversation. And why don't you kind of start off telling us a little bit about who Maxim Group is, and then we'll Thomas and I will dive into RFID technology with you. Sure. And thanks for having me, Matt. Um, so Maxim Group is a full service global packaging supplier. This is actually our 50th year um, of being around. Um, we supply everything from your know, labels, uh, printed labels, uh, packaging uh, to, uh, to RFID. Uh, so, so really anything around there. We're located um, in China, Bangladesh, Pakistan, India, the U.S., um, many others uh, that we can go through. But um, yeah, we've been around for a while. I've been personally in the industry for over 10 years. Uh, some of the big major players, um, but yeah, I really love it here. I've been here for five years, and uh, we really we got a great company here. So you mentioned we mentioned RFID at the start. It seems like that's a big buzzword right now. People are talking about it. We just talked about it on a recent call that we have every Tuesday. And just wondering from your perspective, first off, what is RFID? If anybody listening doesn't know that, and why is this such a bu- buzzword right now? Sure. So, I mean, as I said, I've been in the industry for over 10 years and and really the last couple of years, the two things that have really boomed is everyone's finally getting on board with sustainability and RFID. Um, I'm sure you got plenty of sustainability podcasts, so I'm not going to talk about that. um, (laughs) Check them out if you you haven't heard them. We do have a lot, so be sure you listen to them. Um, So RFID, it's, it's really becoming unavoidable for all suppliers as all major retailers are moving to it now are going to be moving to it soon. Um, some of the major players right now would be Nordstrom's, Dick's, and Walmart, to name a couple. Yeah. Um, with Those the, are some big ones. Yeah. There are rumors of uh, some other major players in the pipeline. Um, but uh, So both Dick's and Walmart are being supported by Auburn's ARC program, which is essentially a way for all suppliers um, for their RFID tags to be tested before shipping in. Um, but to give you a high level overview, which I think you're asking, so, um, an RFID chip, uh, is comprised of three components. So the first would be the chip, which there are two major companies doing that, um, Impinge and NXP. Um, and now this chip ships to the secondary component. The secondary component would be, uh, the aluminum antenna, uh, where the chip sits on. Uh, and now those two pieces will be shipped to the final, uh, component place, which would be like Maxim. Hmm. Uh, so a packaging supplier like ourselves will receive the antenna with the chip. Um, and now we'll inlay it into a sticker, hang tag, belly band. Um, and we will now print the information on that and then encode the information inside it. Um, so usually what the, your, what the suppliers will provide us with is, um, they're, UPC barcode information that would be on the store level. Hmm. Um, so what's going to happen is uh, we're going to give every RFID tag an individualized number. So the UPC barcode and then a serial number, essentially, to go along with that. So that when it gets to the DCs or the store level, um, basically a worker can now go up with a wave a wand and it's going to instantly 
get back uh, exactly what they have on shelves, uh, ideally increasing their inventory accuracy to about 99%. So it'll save Walmart, Dick's, Nordstrom's uh, a lot of money on labor and inventory um, and reduce shrinkage. Uh, and so ideally for the supplier, uh, if there's ever instances before where they go into the store and they see empty shelves, the idea is now this shouldn't happen or be a lot less frequent or, you know, get addressed much quicker. So they'll resupply. So that's the kind of benefit uh, on that side. What was the action forcing event, Josh? Because RFID has been out there for a long, long time. I mean, I, we've been talking about it for, gosh, over a decade at least. So what what is causing all these major players to get into the RFID business at this point in the game? It, yeah, you're 100% right. Um, again, I, I 10, 10 years ago, it was being discussed and pushed, but it, it never took action until recently. And it's price. It comes down to price. Hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, a price of an RFID tag uh, five or so years ago was 8, 10, 12 cents. Um, and we're down to where it should be between four and five cents, depending on location type and all that. Um, so it's really, they found they finally felt comfortable they can kind of push this initiative onto their suppliers where there wouldn't be too, too bad of a pushback, you know, onto them. And this could work out for both sides. Um, so really it, it's the price. Yeah. Now, now let me ask you, uh, and then Thomas, you can follow up. Is there also, okay, a price, but with all the supply chain chaos and all of the, kind of the glut of inventory that's flown in and now it's receding. We have all this inventory. We don't know what to do with it. Is inventory management all the more acute in the minds of those who are having to deal with it? And so does RFID kind of play into that calculation as well? Sure. I mean, at the end of the day, though, this thing was set in motion before COVID started and Mm -hmm. they're not backing off now from everything I hear. You Mm -hmm. know, uh, shipping costs have gone up. um, like, Like everything you said, inventory, Um, but, but at the end of the day, the wheels are in motion and you can't stop now. So Walmart's been doing it in phases. So phase one was like toys, home goods, you know, phase two right now is automotive paint crafts, and then they'll go forward. Phase three will be next year with, I think the balance, but once you kind of start the idea is you can't stop, you have to do everything. Cause if you're only half, you're doing half a store, it's no good. It's gotta be a hundred, it's gotta be all or nothing a hundred percent. So yeah, I, I definitely think it's inconvenient with the timing, um, you know, for the suppliers to eat more costs, but um, wheels are in motion. Mm. Yeah. Is it so it sounds like there's a real benefit if, you, you know, you're a big, uh, a big retailer and you're trying to manage inventory and you, you describe some of the uses there. Are there any other uses for this for I'm thinking like, you know, a consumer perspective or. Uh, or a company supplier perspective, like what are what other ways is this used, or, it, or is it mainly right now being used for inventory? Great, great question. So, to my understanding, it's really about the inventory. There are ways to track um, theft and all that. You know, depending on, you know, you could put uh, readers at certain exits, so you know if certain, you know, if uh, if your your goods are going through certain exits. But it's really it's, it's really about inventory. So at a supplier level, you may be saying, uh, you know, what can I do about this? How can this help me? Um, if you're doing a certain percentage of your, so if, if let's say 60% of all your goods do go into Walmart and Dick's and Nordstrom. So you're, you're already doing 60% or more of your inventory with RFID on it. You can potentially now just stick with the rest of your 40% and start doing the RFID inventory for your own DCs. Um, And we've worked with other customers before. Um, You could contact me or any of my company and we could run case studies on if it makes sense and and, and works for you. So you can adapt that um, if you're doing enough of it or if you're doing high priced items where shrinkage is a big deal. Um, You know, if you have RFID, you don't have to worry about sending something in and the custom or the person you're sending to saying, I only got nine of these. You're supposed to, well, that's a terrible example. You're only supposed <laughs> to get 90,000 of these and it was supposed to be at a hundred thousand, 120,000. Um, and, uh, you can now have the, the, the facts to, you know, to back it up saying I, you know, RFID is scanned it. It's all, it's all there for you. 
So uh, let's say I'm Johnny Footwear Importer and I'm a brand and my retail partner say, hey, you got to get get with the program come 2024. Where do I begin? How do, and I'm not a technical person. I do import compliance or logistics or whatever the case is. What are like three steps out of the gate our brand should be doing to locate the locate the uh, provider? Great ask questions. I mean, what are, what should the, what should I do if I'm just getting like up to speed on this? Great. So, um, if you're someone who doesn't know where to go, I suggest everybody listening, come to me because (laughs) (laughs) if if you don't know, so your packaging supplier should be the person who's guiding you through this whole situation. They're the ones gathering those components of part one and part two. So don't worry about the antenna. Don't worry about the chip. Um, everybody who's um, everybody should for you know. I, I was talking about the Arc approved uh, inlay. So everybody into uh, Dick's and Walmart has to. You need a packaging supplier who's going to be getting those component part one and two from an approved um, inlay supplier, and that'll be listed in your playbook. Mm-hmm. Uh, just make sure that you are getting an ARC approved inlay. So those will come from someone like uh, Boeing Tech. Um, but again, if you're a supplier, you'll get a you'll get a, a handbook and it'll show you who it is. But as far as a packaging supplier goes, like Maxim, you can go to anybody as long as you're using those right components. So you'll come to someone like myself, a salesperson, and, and what they're going to do is, like I said, they'll send you a form. Uh, you'll fill out with your the information they ask, like the UPC number. Um, and again, I'm, I'm talking from what I know and specifically for Walmart. So, uh, you'll give us the information. Um, we will then take that, provide samples for you, send the samples to you or your factory. Um, you will fill out an online form, uh, uh, submit that to Auburn, uh, and then print out a form that the, the website gives you send the form with the samples to Auburn. Ideally, they come back in a few days, say all good to go. And then it's just about placing order. So um, it's all SKU level. So you tell our company, um, we're producing 50,000 uh, orange, um, whatever, orange sneakers. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm sure it's a better, much better example. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, we will then you know, send 50,000 RFID tags for this specific shoe serialized to your factory and it's unfortunate a little bit of headache on supply chain of how you apply that where you apply that to but um we can help you out with that as well and um i know Wa- walmart and nordstrom's have a phenomenal team in place so talk to your buyer and uh they can help you out with any questions as far as where to go to you know to, to talk about placement on your packaging and all that goes but again it all starts with getting a good packaging supplier and uh, Walmart does ask that everyone gets two packaging suppliers. Um, during COVID, there was uh, an issue of inlay shortage. So it was important to have at least two suppliers for uh, supply reasons. Um, I heard about people, you know, uh, not being able to get all the chips, uh, the tags to everyone they need. Um, us personally, we've formed a great partnership with Boing Tech, which is one of the uh, approved inlay suppliers. Um, so we've been able to fortunately avoid this and, you know, with our relationship and, and buying power, we've, we've had a great, we've had a great successes, uh, running RFID program for sure. What if you are a small company listening right now, you don't have a lot of resources. This sounds, uh, there's obviously a cost involved here. So kind of what, what advice would you give to somebody that's listening that, it is a smaller business. I literally just got off the phone before with someone who's going to be ordering 30,000 pieces a year on this. And, and at the end of the day, um, I understand from Walmart's point of view, they're taking a strong stand um, that they're not absorbing costs. So it's on the supplier to deal with that. Um, we're doing everything we can to help you guys out with getting the best pricing we could give. But you're kind of handcuffed at the end of the day to, to you're part of this program now. Um, so my advice is I'm sorry, we'll do everything we can. Um, there are exemptions, um, 
for certain items where if we're doing like a, a metal, someone I work with who does metal trash cans, it interferes with the RFID. Um, so uh, you may get exempt. I think, you know, certain penny level items obviously doesn't make sense to RFID cheaper items. So do your due diligence, talk to your buyer, um, make sure to get everything approved. Um, you may get lucky and find out it just isn't compatible because of the metal or, or some other reason. Um, the packaging won't work with it. Um, but you know, do your due diligence, talk to your buyer, get everything approved, um, and then worry about the production part after. But you know, Walmart and Dix is really looking for everybody to get approved sooner than later. Um, and then, uh, February 1st, I know for Walmart is the date for phase two when everything in store, uh, needs to be tagged. Um, 2024. Yeah. Yeah. So phase one, everything should have been this past February. Phase two is February to February and then presumably phase three and so on will be February to February. So with these big retailers we're talking about, obviously that's a situation if you're selling to them, it clearly makes sense. You know, you're, you're going to have to do this, but are, are there situations where, you know, if you're thinking strategically, are there sometimes when it makes a lot of sense outside of that to do RFID? Are there times when it does is not going to make sense to do it? Um, what are your thoughts on that? As far as I'm okay, I'm someone who's selling into Walmart. You're saying is there is there ever times it makes sense for me to use RFID on my own product regardless of them? Right, exactly. Outside of the scenario, you know, in, yeah. in other. You know, in other scenarios outside of these big sure. retailers, sure. are there times when it makes sense and times when it doesn't make sense? Sure. I mean, at the end of the day, you got to look at your inventory and your labor. Um, if you are finding, I mean, and again, this is something where a good packaging supplier come to us and ask us the question. We can go through it. It's, it's a lot of specifics. So uh, if it's if your business is very labor intensive with inventory, this can can help out a lot. If you're having a lot of issues where you're sending things and receiving things and you're disagreeing with counts, um, it's all about getting right now. It's really all about, you know, complete inventory accuracy, um, and saving yourself on labor and, and, and inventory and, and shrinkage and all that. But it, it goes back to, again, I was saying, if you're using high priced items, those three, four, five, you know, uh, TVs, you know, it's, that's a big deal as opposed to, you know, something that costs you 30 cents, 20 cents to make. So uh, it's very client specific. So high volume items, high labor costs on inventory, maybe a, a red flag for you to maybe I should look into this. So as we close out the conversation, Josh, what else does Maxim do? Like we've talked a lot about RFID appropriately so, but are there other things you all assist in as it relates to shoe companies looking to partner with packaging companies? Sure, sure. So um, it's funny. So for apparel, I, I tell people anything you throw out, we pretty much do, you know, the, the, the hang tags throwing off the side, the size stickers. So we do all that. We do the heat transfers on the inside neck label. We'll do, if your underwear goes into a box, we'll do that. Um, the carton label stickers, all that, um, anything trim packaging related, shoot me an email. It's, uh, Josh, J O S H dot M A C Y at maxim dot group. And I can help, uh, forward your inquiry within our company to whoever can help, uh, assist you. But yeah, anything packaging trim, trim related, we're global and kind of have our hands in everything. So you said Josh dot Macy at maxim dot group. Is that right? dash group.com. So J O S H period M A C Y at M A X I M dash G R O U P dot com. <laughs> dot com. Yeah. Cool. Well, Josh, I can't thank you enough for coming in and educating us because again, we're hearing a lot about this and clearly yeah. we talk a lot kind of in the testing world, the chemical testing world where the, you have actual law, like federal law, state law, yeah. it's a guide, chemical testing, and then you have customer law, which sometimes is different and when cus customer law often trumps actual law. And so we have your big customers saying, hey, we're going to do this initiative yep. uh, and we want you to be a part of it, but it's going to incur some costs and some, you know, some learning, a learning curve, if you will. Uh, that's where we step in and really can help provide information that's helpful and make it as smooth as possible. So we want to thank you for coming on and educating us on RFID. And Thomas, as you know, 
in the Intel Center, in our policy brief section, we have a whole one pager. It's actually two pagers on RFID that we created back in January for, for FDR members just to educate them on what the technology is and what's happening. And so our members can check that out in the Intel Center. Yeah, and it's a, it's a one-click button to sign up for the Intel Center. Go to FDRA.org. And I mentioned the weekly call earlier. You can click on that, sign up for that. You can click on the Intel Centers for FDRA members. There's a ton of resources there. So this is one of them to check out. I, you know, I, I learned a lot today uh, hearing from Josh on this. So it's it's a very interesting and evolving issue. And so we're, we're really glad to be able to talk to, to Josh and Maxim Group about this important issue. Yeah. And uh, one last comment. Uh, I don't have necessarily the specifics because they haven't been handed down yet, but another thing I hear swirling is for the people not, you know, obliging to the uh, the RFID program and from phase one is past due, I hear that penalties will be coming down in mm-hmm. the future. So again, I don't have any specifics on that, but get it approved, get it in because there, there, you know, there will be repercussions, I think at some point coming soon. Got it. Got it. Well, Josh, thanks for again, educating us on the technology and what Maxim Group does and uh, being a part of Shoe and Show. Uh, folks, this has been another exciting edition of the Shoe and Show program. Uh, we hope that you subscribe and listen and share this with friends and colleagues within the industry. Go to shoeandshow.com for all of our catalog, hundreds and hundreds of episodes of us talking about footwear, the business of footwear, the fashion, the design, the development, the policy of footwear. Uh, you can listen to just about any topic as it relates to the business of footwear there and to your heart's content. Uh, also rate us. Uh, five star ratings is what we only take. We've created a special shoe and show algorithm. It kicks out all other star ratings. So don't even try to give us four and a half. It's not going to work. Uh, but all kidding aside, we ask that you rate us. It helps other people get access to the show and provides uh, some visibility to what we're doing here now, almost seven years in. Uh, until next time, we hope you have a great rest of your day. And until we see you on the next program, Shoe and Show is out. Shoe in has been brought to you by the FDRA the footwear industry's association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion, helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. For information about FDRA, visit fdra.org.